Good morning students. I welcome you all to yet another video lesson of our chapter 3. In the uh, last class we have done with the chapter 3 part 1 of uh, types and agencies of education. Today we will be dealing with part 2 of uh, chapter 3. Let's do a quick recap of what we have done in part 1. In part 1 we have uh, discussed about the definition or meaning of agencies of education. We have also discussed about the types and agencies of education that is formal education, informal education and non-formal education. We have also discussed about special schools, open university, open schools, distance education etc okay so in this chapter we in this class we will be discussing about uh, guiding agencies of education which is in uh, page 61 of your textbook so i want you all to have your textbooks as well your, as well as your printed notes with you so that you can follow me up as i discuss with you the lesson content so uh, today Let's look at guiding agencies of education. So what do you understand by the meaning guiding agencies of education? Guiding agencies of education are those agencies uh, which works in the process of assisting schools, colleges, universities, etc. and coordinate them to run smoothly. The institutions which coordinate and maintain the quality of the school, colleges and university, etc. are known as guiding agencies of education. In your uh, first class, I have told you that uh, agencies of education means uh, they are the specialized institution that directly or indirectly exercises an educational influence on the child, right? So uh, the agencies of formal education were school, colleges, universities, etc. So guiding agencies are those ag agencies which help to assist the uh, formal system of education institutions okay so that is the meaning of guiding agencies of education so today we will be looking at three guiding agencies of education those three are NCERT UGC and UNESCO NCERT stands for National Council of Educational Research and Training UGC stands for Un uh, University Grants Commission and uh, UNESCO stands for United Nations Education Educational Scientific and Cultural Organization so let's look at uh, those three organization. First, let's look at NCERT. NCERT was established on 1st September 1961 at New Delhi or, and their main aim was to provide academic support for improving the quality of school education in India. So NCERT mainly, uh, it, its main focus is on the school education in India. It has been assisted, it has been engaged in assisting and advising the need-based school improvement programs. NCERT has, uh, under NCERT, they have established uh, SCERT, SIET, and diets, okay. So, uh, SCERT, what does SCERT stands for? SCERT stands for State Council of Educational Research and Training. SIET stands for State, State uh, Institute of Educational Training, and diet stands for District Institute of Education Training. Uh, the headquarters of NCERT is uh, SC, NCERT is in New, is in is in New Delhi. So under under this organization, they have in the state level, in the district level, uh, they have. Uh, or, uh, they have established different other organizations for assisting the uh, school curriculum and school education. Okay, so what uh, what are the functions of NCERT? Let's look at the functions, uh, the role that they play. Uh, the research, the council undertakes research in the field of education. It works at different levels of school education and assists other agencies by giving financial grant for research work in different fields. So if uh, you are, if in the school level you want to go for different kind of research work, then NCRT gives financial grants for research work in different fields. Training. The council organizes different training programs for pre-service and in-service teacher. What is mean by pre-service teacher? Pre-service means uh, the teachers who are uh, going to be a teacher but uh, have not taken uh, any training yet that is pre-service and in-service means the teacher who are already in the who are already engaged in the teaching jobs but they want to uh, pursue their training so pre-service and in-service teacher it also it provides the, organizes different training programs for pre-service as well as in-service teachers educational service Periodical surveys are conducted to know the actual conditions of school, condition, school conditions in India from time to time. So uh, they conduct, they not only like give financial grants or they not only give uh, trainings to teachers, okay, but uh, they also, from time to time, they also have educational surveys uh, uh, conducted in different schools in India. 
to know the conditions of how the school is uh, uh, working or how the school curriculum is uh, improving. So uh, next we have publication. The, the council publishes uh, educational journals, research papers, school textbook, teacher's guide, workbooks, and other instructional materials for school teachers as well as the school. So uh, they, they also publishes different kinds of uh, books for the school as well as the teachers. So in the school, uh, the type of textbooks that you are using uh, for your every uh, day to day um, school activity all those talks, textbooks are published under ncert they not only publish the school textbooks but they also publish educational journals research papers uh, teachers guidebooks and works workbooks etc examination reforms the council has another important activity in the field of examination so in order to achieve these uh, different kinds of seminar workshops training courses extension lectures are regularly conducted from time to time we have uh, next we have human values the council provides the instructional material for the promotion of human values in education to schools so uh, what do you understand by human values human values are defined as those values which helps men to live in harmony with the world and with the society around him so the council provides instructional materials uh, to promote human values population education the council organizes some programs on population education in school for the awareness. See, population education has become one of the most important topic okay, in the present scenario because uh, pop the population is rising at a very alarming rate and uh, people are not aware of the ill effects of overpopulation. They are not even aware of what uh, overpopulation causes. And there are different uh, kinds of disadvantages and ill effects uh, that overpopulation have on us. So the council organizes some programs on uh, to make people aware about the ill effects of overpopulation. So uh, it also organizes different programs on population education. So NCRT has established its place for regulating and promoting school education in India. Now let's look at uh, UGC. UGC stands for Un University Grants Commission. University Grants Commission, uh, UGC is also uh, known as Radha Krishnan Commission, okay, but it is primarily known as University Grants Commission. It was uh, uh, established in the year 1948. This commission allocates recurrent and capital grants or both to the university for improvement and development of the university. So basically, UGC is, uh, UGC's main focus is on the higher education level, uh, maybe universities and uh, all that. So University Grants Commission came into existence by a resolution of the Ministry of Education in November 1953 with basic objectives as under. They have given uh, four objectives. Uh, let's look at that. Maintenance of academic standards of universities, coordination of educational policies in the field of political system of the country, to give grants to universities for development, to give grants to individual or group of teachers for research. So UGC uh, is such that uh, they give uh, different grants uh, or different financial aid to uh, students who wants to uh, pursue their career in the field of research. Okay, uh, you have to qualify a certain examination for that. But uh, they give financial grant to the research workers as well as they give financial grants for the maintenance and development of universities and to give grants to universities for development and it also uh, provides financial grants for the teacher uh, regarding uh, if they want to go for um, research work so that is UGC. There are different powers and functions of the UGC given in your textbook. So uh, you can also go through that. Now moving on, uh, let's look at UNESCO, United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO. In 1945, countries all over the world assembled and signed the constitution of an organization which was established in 1946 and was named as UNESCO. The, uh, the main aim of UNESCO was, uh, is to free mankind from war, okay, and to create proper educational and psychological climate for single world society, meaning the world as one. They wanted to uh, free mankind from war. There are various programs of UNESCO spread all over the world, okay, uh, and it also works for the cultural and educational promotion among millions of people of the world. Uh, so, uh, 
basically UNESCO stands for World Peace and Prosperity. So there are different functions of UNESCO, educational functions, scientific functions and cultural functions given in your textbook. So in the educational functions, every child of the world should have an opportunity to read and write. It helps the citizen of each country to become literate. So uh, basically the uh, uh, main uh, view of UNESCO is to uh, make everyone literate since every child deserves an opportunity to read and write. There is a education should be a lifelong and co continuous process for the development. It should not be considered as an age and time bound basis. So according to UNESCO, um, like education is a lifelong process and it is a continuous process. So uh, everyone should be literate and educated. There is a great need for Mm, there is a great need for the promotion of adult uh, literacy in the developed as well as underdeveloped country. See, mm, in our generation, almost all of us are receiving uh, the formal system of education. But in the past generation, uh, we did not have any like proper educational setting. We did not have any proper uh, formal educational institution. And many of our elders and parents did not receive uh, proper education uh, that is required. So uh, according to UNESCO, uh, adult literacy is very important. Adult literacy means uh, giving the... Uh, education giving certain type of education settings a certain type of curriculum and uh, working for liter uh, working for adult literacy means educating the elders and the um, matured ones so unesco looks after the following functions of education all over the world it looks it is working very hard for adult literacy and uh, literacy all over the world and uh, it stands for world peace and prosperity it also works to remove uh, illiteracy. Illit uh, like I said, it's, it is working hard for the uh, literacy of uh, both the young as well as the old ones. It helps in arranging distance education. Like I have discussed earlier, distance education is um, a distance in the process of distance education. We have a, a vast number or vast system of curriculum that we can choose our subjects. So UNESCO helps in arranging distance education. It also pro, uh, UNESCO also works to provide educational material to alloc to allocate grants to voluntary bodies to make provision for the training of various categories of teacher. Teacher, see, teacher training of teachers uh, has become one of the most important factor okay, because uh, teachers is teachers are like the guiding agency for the students, right? So, uh, in order to teach the young ones or in order to teach the immature ones, you have to be well versed with the curriculum. You have to be well well versed with your job. So, training of teachers has become a very important factor. So, UNESCO works to make uh, to make provision for the training of various categories of teacher to allocate financial grants to schools for textbook. TV, projectors, computers, and other essential equipment, etc. So uh, UNESCO tries to unify people for world peace. Okay, all these aims and all these objectives comes under one aim that is world peace and prosperity. So UNESCO, uh, that is the functions, uh, that is the aim and functions of UNESCO. With that, uh, we have... Uh, come to the end of uh, what uh, NCERT, UGC and UNESCO means. So in conclusion, uh, under one, uh, I'll just give one conclusion. In conclusion uh, to all that we have discussed earlier, it all comes back to formal and informal system of education, right? So none of the uh, above discussed agencies is complete in itself, okay? Uh, formal education is not complete in itself. Informal education is not complete in itself, okay? Because each gives a certain type of education which is only a part of the whole. In reality, uh, because formal and informal education goes hand in hand, okay? Non-formal education is such that if you want to, uh, only if you uh, want to pursue and only if you want to continue for higher education, you can offer non-formal agencies of education. But informal, ed uh, informal education and non-formal education, they go hand in hand. In reality, both formal and informal agencies of education are mutually complementary and supplementary for the complete and wholesome development of individual. Both formal and informal uh, education are complementary and supplementary for the complete and wholesome development of the individuals. Thus, both the agencies uh, should go uh, hand in hand, should cooperate in educating the child for the balanced and wholesome development of the child. 
none is to be neglected both formal and informal is very important none is to be neglected as both complete the desired development and uh, both works for the wholesome development uh, both works for the positive characteristics both works for the uh, wholesome development of uh, the individuals See, uh, thus in conclusion we can say that both formal informal and non-formal uh, they are very important but informal and mm, formal education they go hand in hand and, and as they are complementary and supplementary to each other with that we have come to the end of our chapter three types and agencies of education i hope you have all learned something from what i've discussed uh, with you all and i'll see you all in the next class thank you